great, honestly. Two more, in fact. Once again, not exactly all that accurate, but MCU sitting on 12 High Templar, so I don't think he's going to worry too much. Actually, now 16 High Templar, so he's definitely not worried about a couple of missed storms. Yeah, and he has an Archon with his army, which is what Alive's banking on pulling the victory here for him. If there's no, if there's no Observer, then the Ghosts go crazy. But with an Observer, this is not going to work out so well. No, it's not. There's, in fact, three Observers out on the map here. And there's the scan. It sees the Observer. Feedbacks go down once again. And now Alive in full retreat. And that storm was absolutely massive on the right flank of Alive, tearing into his army. Chargelets continue to get aggressive. More Warbins from the Warp Prism, in fact, at the back. And Alive micros for all he's worth against this. But there are a metric ton of Archons. More storms go down. Alive getting shredded and there's the GG and MC comes back from 0-2 down to tie the series up and uh, that's an incredible display of uh, determination from MC here who's not just gonna you know fall over uh, and complete the 0-3 the whitewash or anything so MC now has uh, pulled an incredible comeback he has to play on the last remaining map which of course Alive's gonna choose Antigua Shipyard and this is going to be a very difficult, if the uphill battle wasn't difficult enough, the highest level of that treadmill is going to be Antigua Shipyard, which Alive has such an incredible record on. Yeah, that's essentially the final boss, really, of this particular series. Well, I don't know, man. If MC played so very, very well on Metropolis, he really did. That was absolutely stellar play. Great example. And now going on to the final map. It is a very tough map for him, but if he keeps this form up, he certainly got a chance at it. Yes, he could. And the thing is, though, that despite MC being able to pull this uh, back to 2-2, he has made mistakes. And, uh, you know, you, you cannot really call, I guess, the upgrades being late a mistake. That's rather a choice than a mistake by MC. But he had, he almost dropped that game there. You know, there's a few sloppy engagements, engaging before 2-2 finished and so on. He definitely has to shape up alive. Has shown us as well that in the IPL4 finals, he was fighting from behind there, you know, despite being ahead a lot. And then he just came back to clean the series up. And once again, of course, that could very well happen here. It could. It very well could. We'll see if we can pull it off. We're going to go to a quick commercial break when we come back. Final game of this series between MC and Alive.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back to the final game in the series between SKMC. He is in the blue trunks. He is playing Protoss to the east of Antigua Shipyard. Wow, it's leaving Apollo almost breathless by the sounds of it. Yeah, man, I am breathless. I'm not even breathing. I'm actually suffocating. Well, that's unfortunate and makes casting quite difficult. This is hard mode, ladies and gents. And here we go. Fanatics alive. He is in the purple trunks. He is playing Terran to the west. He was two games up at the start of this series, has now brought it back to the final, final match on his favorite map. The map where he, in fact, does not lose. This is his trump card. He gets to play it as the one thing that is between MC and the round of four. Yeah, you just always have to think about it is like a tennis match, for example, when the opponent has his serve, you know, he has a bit of an advantage that starts the game off. And this is exactly what Alive has. And Alive, th the way that this, this map favors him is that it favors aggression. And, and as long as he plays to that aggressive nature, he can pull MC apart through dropping his main, yep. running up his natural. And the reason why it's difficult for Protoss players is it's very difficult to, to maneuver your forces from one location to another, especially the ramp that kind of looks the other way compared to where the forces are going to be. So that's how Alive, if he wants to win this series, has to play against MC. But MC, you know, it's up to him now. He knows how Alive has to play. MC has multiple choices on what he's going to do here. Aggression himself, whether he stays on two bases, whether he delays his upgrades to get to the unit count higher. But one thing is for sure is Alive Throws down a proxy barracks. He wants this dead, man. He wants it ended. He uh, is most, uh, you know, he could just completely all in here. Now, we did see this maneuver from him on Terminus, and it was against a Nexus first. This is not the case on Antigua. He knows that it's not going to be the case on Antigua. So does he go all the way? Does he all in completely? Or does he do something behind this? Is this simply for pressure? We will find out very shortly. This is very dangerous to be honest, because especially because MC style, every single game, aside from that Nexus versus, he'll chrono boost the gateway, the Zealot, Stalker, Stalker. And that combination of units will be able to beat this down quite significantly. Um, I'm looking at MC's chrono boost, and he hasn't oh, spent it yet. He's, he's got it. 40. He's but he sees it anyway, yep. and now he will be wanting a chrono boost into those Stalkers, and then we'll almost be able to hold this off with just with a single gateway. Yeah, really nice. Really nice display from MC, knowing what his opponent likes to do. Has no doubt studied that and is able to discover that proxy barracks, which gives him a huge edge going into this. And the question is, what does Alive do now? Now that he's seen, he knows that his opponent knows. So what is his move? It's, he's certainly not going to all in from here. That would be ridiculous. That would be suicidal, surely. Yeah, he, he just has to expand behind it. There's uh, there's no way this can work now. MC has Chrono Boost, and he's even confident in, like you said, knowing that he knows that he knows that he knows that he yep. knows that he's actually Chrono Boost in the Cybernetics Core, knowing that Alive can't continue with this. He doesn't need to spend the Chrono Boost in that gateway, and yeah. that's the mind game, the, the, the way that the game is meant to be played, and the decisions that unravel without even seeing anything. And Stalker does take a bit of damage, though, Quite which a lot, is yeah. uh, a little bit scary. Yeah, he did run right into that one. It was a nice little catch there. And Alive actually moving in with that SCV. Scouts the Nexus. Will be uh, losing that SCV momentarily. But as he said, the expansion comes down behind here. And funnily enough, that expansion actually ends up being a little bit faster than MC's. Not that that really makes that much of a difference. And MC with a third stalker out is going to push back almost any counter marines. There's just going to be way too much kiting and damage output while kiting. Uh, from MC. He does have uh, 9 Marines total now, a 10th actually coming to the center here. MC does not really want to go into the cloud here. Mm, don't go into the cloud, MC, it's suicidal, and that Zealot once again, <laughs> early stage of the game, Zealots have a tendency of walking into bullets. And interestingly enough, we're actually seeing double expand here from Alive as well, which is a style that we've been seeing a lot more of in this matchup lately. And we actually see three more gateways coming down. And look at the kiting from MC, just so incredibly good. And the yep. Marines will do nothing here. But with three additional gateways coming down, he could just flip this around and push out now with these three Stalkers. He still has to be very careful about the Cloud, though. That's the problem, is that without any vision range, you just take so much more damage um, from the Marines, of course. And you have to actually go in the Cloud and 
and you take even more damage being a ranged unit. Uh, but with these three additional gateways and the second gas, MC's going to turn the heat up pretty fast here. Yeah, I have to wonder, I mean, we've got these Marines now backing off. I was going to say, the risk is that those Marines hang around the center for too long, and he ends up going outside of the vision range, and is able to get a pylon down, and actually start to really apply pressure to a fairly exposed natural there, but Elias has now backed off there. He is really behind on tech as a result of all of this. That's the biggest thing about grabbing that second command center is no tech of any description he's only just getting gas in now he has no sign of any marauders or anything like that so maybe mc can poke up there and do a little bit of damage yeah and because of that he has to throw down a second bunker no matter what it's just simple simple pressure could kill him because even stim is delayed the unit count is low here yeah. uh mc still on four gateways though and, and still kind of listening to his nexus though which is uh climbing his his probe count so incredibly high over the suvs but there is a sneaky SCV at the top left here that sees no early third base. Um, so he's already like, what are you doing, MC? And because of the greed that we're seeing from Alive, who has to throw down a third bunker? Like we said, he has no units here. And, uh, you know, MC could be walking into a wall again. He could very well, but what he also wants to do is, of course, try and deny this third for as long as possible. At the moment, that third will serve to be very useful for saturating his mineral lines. You get a third this early, then you're not going to have your main and natural saturated by that point. It's not going to happen, so that will help him out in that respect. MC has not shown a massive sign of aggression yet, but it's coming in very, very shortly. Got quite a few force fields to shut this down. Wow, there's even a fourth bunk, a fifth bunker coming behind that. Ultra defensive play here by Alive. MC runs up the ramps like, nope, not going in there anytime soon. And MC was probably thinking like, WTF, like what the hell? Why do you have five bunkers? It doesn't make any sense. And it all is because of that single SCV on the third base indirectly scouting the, the capabilities of what MC can do here. Yeah. MC shown his game after game, and not just within this series, but in different tournaments too, that that mid-game aggression has won him tournaments. So, alive playing the player rather than the race, which, you know, any two-base aggression such as Colossus would have killed that, or, you know, anything else, but that's very, very smart from alive to kind of think of how MC prefers to play, and now he's actually playing tight again, tight to his chest here, MC, who throws down robotics and Twilight, and also two extra gateways, so we'll be staying on two base for a little bit longer here, but the problem for MC is that this is that third command center finished, and we'll be hovering over to that third base very shortly, and double engineering bait versus zero forge again. Yes, that's exactly what it is, and M that's just the one thing MC is not doing at the moment. He's coming straight for Blink once again, nice and early, he may be able to do something with that, but once those two engineering bays go down, and indeed, once we see a fifth and sixth gas, you're going to see a nasty, heavily upgraded Marauder Heavy composition with a hell of a lot of medivacs. Oh, it's it's grim, man, at the start of this series. At the start of this map, in fact, it really is for MC at this stage. If he was able to do damage, if he was able to deny that third or anything, then he would have been in a better position than he is now. Yeah, this Stalker regression is actually pretty good though. He's hiding his Stalker count at the back of his base here. and MC's just going to try and go for a big, big Stalker push towards the third base. The big problem is though, is that ticking time bomb of those double upgrades. Yep. And especially because Medivacs are coming out here. A scan lands on the natural, sees very small amount of units here. And actually MC warps in Zealots again, kind of hiding his tech, hiding what his actual strategy is to be. Yep. But like I said, when these upgrades finish, when those Medivacs come out, this is so difficult for MC to try to do anything with the, the amount of investment in his army. Yeah, we're going to have to see some absolutely incredible Stalker Micro here from MC. We may very well get it. Zealot Charge now to follow that one up. Down comes the Nexus, immediately scouted there by Alive. He knows the timings and now looking to push out here. Mm, well, Army Supply is actually in favor of MC pretty heavily. This push could have well it depends how long it takes if he goes in right now he's not gonna have upgrades of course but he will quite soon gotta watch out for that and blink stalkers in the main waiting ready to pounce here is alive gonna take the bait is he gonna lift up and go in oh he the spots the stalkers, stalkers. Ready to pounce. he spots the stalkers right now here comes the flank and alive once again spots it because he's got that forward scout marine which gives him the opportunity to then jump back quick evacuation there from alive to get out of a potentially very hairy situation mc once again holds quite nicely make sure that his third continues but an economic advantage for alive certainly now having taken six gas 
And also, we'll start 2-2 two, two just now. So, 2-2 two, two has begun before the forge is even complete here. So, any engagements now from MC are going to be so, so bad for him in this mid-stage of the game. Unless that storm completes and he's able to get High Templar in the mix. Because, of course, High Templar don't care about no, the upgrades. But, look at that. We do have a small squad of units on the third base here. Four Marines, two Marauders. Aren't really going to bring that down, that Nexus down, anytime soon. As the units are so incredibly close here. But, at the same time, alive looking to try to poke into that main base. Yeah, Alive being very, very cautious here, honestly. Incredibly cautious. Very smart play there by him. And MC, very formidable army. Doesn't have Storm as of yet. Here comes the push right now. Takes out quite a few probes here, so certainly worthwhile as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't want to reveal the Templar, needless to say. Trying to keep those back as much as possible. Great control here by Alive to do as much damage as possible. Tearing his way through the probe count. Admittedly, it will get replaced pretty quickly, but he's killed 17 workers in this entire game now and has 75 SCVs. Oh, this is very, very tense. MC just playing such a great, great defensive game here. Absolutely amazing defense so far. He's taken no hits whatsoever from Alive. And you can see by the supply that uh, uh, the MC's keeping up despite having that later third base. The upgrades, though, is the scary part. He has to keep chrono boosting them. He has skipped a couple of seconds worth of chrono boost on those forges. And that 2 2 is getting so incredibly close to finishing. We do have five ghosts as well coming into the mix. And of course, ghosts are going to be the key. In absolutely beating MC's army here. There's absolutely no way he can take over into Colossus properly because he's only just started to spend his gas on upgrades and, of course, High Templar. You know, I don't like at this stage uh, for MC anyway is the comparison of MC's macro to Alive's macro. That early third gave him such an edge. 78 SCVs and 12 racks up. He is pumping yeah. it out. He's even adding more barracks on top of that. He's going to be able to replenish that army so fast, and he's got the economy to actually sustain it, and that will give him the edge that he needs. Whereas MC gateway count is much much lower. He doesn't have the ability to tech switch yet. Two more CCs coming in the back here for Alive. While MC has done a great job of not taking damage to his army, I'm very concerned that at this stage with these upgrades, Alive can just bulldoze it. Yeah, that's exactly true. And basically what that means is MC has to have one engagement, but one amazing, perfect, storm-hitting, force-fills landing engagement. Yeah. No mistakes, because he's not going to have the money to do anything else once he hits his 200 supply mark, which he isn't. This is going to be it. Yeah, here comes the stim going forward just by a small amount of units alive. Does not stim his entire army forward. He's not that silly. Observer gets an eye on it. Alive immediately spots that great, great eye from him. And now MC looking to try and get the engagement. Moves up to the top here. Gains advantage of the higher ground. It's the storms that really matter, though. That was a big stim there by Alive, but he's got a lot of medivacs. Another storm at the front. That's a nice one. Good damage done there. He needs a couple more. He's getting the uh, angle that he needs to make that happen. But now there are ghosts that are able to repulse that completely. There's 10 High Templar here, but where are the storms? We need them right now. Nice snipes there by Alive. Runs right into a big Ooh. storm. Oh, big storm there. That hurts. Still. Still very, very tense moment. But MC just can't engage up there. He took no. a lot of decent EMPs despite having, you know, the storm capability. The the snipes were really good there by uh, by uh, Alive, who pushes yep. that back. But he has a mining base, or not really a mining base, but a puncher fortress on the left. He's going to take the gold momentarily. MC has a closing window, and it has to be now. Oh, yes, and there's a big stim from Alive. These are very heavily, heavily injured units. If he gets good storms down here, he can tear the pieces, and that is a lot of damage done to Alive. But he continues to push forward once again, and a couple of Archons coming in. They'll be eliminated before they can get anything. Catches in a mortal out of position as well. Alive, hyper-aggressive. MC bleeding hard now, adding six more gateways on. Loses another Immortal, and Alive now in a position where he could really take this. Defensive storms are all that stand in the way. Yeah, oh my god, 2-2 two, two finished again after that fight in the middle. Another mistake from MC, who just could have pulled back and waited, but now he's on the back foot, unfortunately. The gold base, or the blue base, middle base, sorry, is mining. The relentless aggression will now never stop for MC, but does he have enough to hold? Oh, uh, MC is below 100 supply, man. I don't think so. Alive is pretty much maxed out. He has so many barracks. His macro is so good at this stage. Going right for the third base. Should be able to take that out as well. Look at the reinforcements streaming across the map. MC's got this and pretty much nothing else. He doesn't have storm capability. He doesn't have Colossus. He really is not 
working on anything other than gateway units and that single immortal losing his third base now mc trying to hold on but here comes the flank from the side that single immortal now going down 75 supply and falling alive looks like he's going to nail this down in the final game on this map where he just cannot be beaten and the electricity bill for Alive is so incredibly high, the lights on the barracks never turn off here. And look at this, just so many units here. MC is going to drop the series, he is not going to Paris. But There's Alive the has secured his place in the top four. Oh my man, oh my. The victory once again of Alive, having won IPL4 now. Goes to Paris. He's in the round of four. He is in the money. And if his form is anything like that, then wow. We can expect a absolutely fantastic round of four. But what I will say is that that was his Protoss opponent. That was the only Protoss left in this tournament. He's gone now. And, well, it's going to be TBT and potentially, of course, TBZ going forward here for a live. Yeah, depending on, of course, Nesty and Symbol the non-Terran players left in this tournament, but we do have a live... Oh my god, he comes off the IPL4 win, he beats MC to gain his spot to travel to Europe to play in Paris. Congratulations to Alive, and what a fantastic series that was. Nail-biting end there, but unfortunately for MC, despite playing a perfect defense, you have to sacrifice a lot to pull that off, you know? The third base is late, and Alive takes full advantage of that and you know MC plays to to hold on one strength of Alive but loses to another and like we said at the end they're 12 barracks never a stopping unit production and uh, Alive pulls through. That was Macro at its finest man he takes the risk to get that early third he is able to secure it he goes hyper defensive there and it was enough to get his economy into an unbelievable position and the bulldozer comes down on MC and there was no stopping that once it got its momentum going. Wow, that was a crazy series and I hope the next one's gonna live up to that. Of course we are, well we will be going into a Terran versus Terran, MMA versus Puma, a rematch from the Intellect Stream Masters Grand Final. I mean oh, not Grand yeah. Final, Semi-Final, but semi -final wow, 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 wow. Ooh, TBT. Very, very big strength of both players, in fact. It's probably going to be one of the best TBT you've seen in a very long time, I would imagine. We are taking a 15-minute break while the French cast has set up everything. So now is a good time to go and get something to eat because we're going to be in for the long haul once again with the best of five TBT between Slayer's MMA and Evil Genius's Puma. We'll be back in 15 minutes, folks. Thanks to our sponsors once again, Twitch TV, Astro Gaming, and Asus Republic of Gamers. We will see you shortly.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you still awake and or out there? I certainly hope so, because it's my pleasure to bring you the Mighty Slayers MMA. He is in the red trunks. He is playing Terran to the west of Dual Sight versus his opponent, Evil Genius's Puma. He is in the blue trunks, playing Terran to the east. Oh, Puma, even though, you know, statistically is the weakest link out of the top eight we have here, through his results through the group stages, he still has the fighting spirit. He beat down MMA in the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship semi-final 3-0, or 3-1 I think it was actually. And what an incredible feat that was, which nobody expected. And here, of course, we have MMA back for revenge to you know, bring back glory to the Slayers team. And this is going to be an incredible best of five series. And what an explosive starting map we have here. Yeah, and an opportunity for MMA to avenge his fallen father. Boxer goes down in Puma's group to Puma no less, I might add. Puma defeated Boxer soundly in that group. And no doubt MMA will want vengeance for that, just as he's had to do in the past in so many different tournaments, including, of course, that fateful, fateful MLG where we saw Boxer's fantastic performance brought to an end. And then MMA was sent up against MVP as the Avenger. Sadly, not able to pull that off. But things have changed, man. How things have changed. We have MMA in the round event. We have MVP gone from the tournament thanks to Evil Genius's Idra. Yes, Evil Genius is killing legends in this tournament. Will we have another one of those? And we do have Refinery first from Puma here. So, of course, aggression's coming out from the Evil Genius here. And why not dual site a very small map, a very rewarding map towards early aggression. Though yes. we do have a refinery down likewise here for MMA, but afterwards. So, so far in terms of builds, it's uh, a little bit favored towards MMA, especially if he plays on the more defensive side, of course, because he has that little tad of a better economy because he was focusing on minerals rather than getting that early gas up. Yeah, that's very true. Factory comes down for Puma. Needless to say, there's no other reason to take that refinery so quickly. And the question is, what are we going to see from Puma here with the refinery first? Um, probably Cloak Banshee is the, the number one option here. There's still a multitude of different ones, but there is the refinery coming down. So probably just Cloak Banshee yeah. here, and especially the way that the factory is placed is this could be Cloak Banshee, uh, the, a build that we've seen Puma use on uh, Antigua Shipyard, I think it was last time, against MMA, yeah. was where you lift the factory up and then plant it down and throw Tech Lab on it, and then you can turn it into a 1-1-1 where you have Cloak Banshees alongside siege tanks with a sprinkle of Marines to really push the front doors but with only a single gas taken here by MMA looks like he will be staying on the very basic marine uh, heli and probably a starport coming up next as well though oh yes and uh, let's see if this ends up being a build order win for one or the other the tech lab is uh, coming up needless to say a little bit early for the swap over but doesn't really matter one way or the other he lifts off and that's what he's gonna be doing and this is of course completely out of sight of MMA unless he decides to go in for a scan and wow MMA actually going for an expand here. Yeah, so of course we know that MMA is on the defensive foot now. All he has to do is defend the aggression coming from Puma, and likewise, if he doesn't, then Puma's just gonna get such a significant lead, especially if that Cloak Banshee goes completely undetected. The scan point for both players, or rather MMA, will be that six minute and 20 mark exactly. So we'll see if he scans or whether he can figure something out just by these initial Hellions, actually. Possibly. He is going for it right now. He completely misses those Marines going down to the other Zelnaga Watchtower, needless to say. So all these Hellions can really do at this point is poke up this ramp, unless, of course, the Supply Depot gets left in. And he's going for... Oh, no! Don't miss the skin! He is in! Wow! Puma! A what? big blunder there! I, I don't believe that. That is ridiculous. That should not have happened in a million years. He goes up the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> sees that it's closed, goes back again, and then goes in while Puma's asleep. One has to assume. Oh no, this is such a big, big mistake here. SCVs are going to go down. Now he has a choice. Does he send the Cloak Banshee to go do the damage before the Engineering Bay comes down, which it already is in? Or does he defend against the Hellion, which can actually pick off these three Marines? That control. Correctly. That Hellion control, man. Already four kills on that Hellion. And Puma looking to flank it. The Hellion's still not down. Could get another shot off there. Maybe one more does so. And... That is one hell of a heroic Hellion, I can tell you that for a fact. It's pretty much saved the arse of the one and only 
Slayer's MMA at this point, and Viking comes out at just the right time. There's the cloak. The scan will immediately follow, and that looks like it might be the shutdown. But bear in mind, one Viking doesn't kill a Banshee that fast. There is a missile turret coming up, though, and things are looking rather grim here for Puma. Manages to arc around again and do a little bit more damage. Hellion's actually pushing under the front, not really doing much, but there anyway. And that Cloak Banshee now taking more damage. Cloak Energy is dying off. He's only managed to kill five SCVs so far. Looking to try and get another scan in there. He gets it, and there's the lockdown. And, well, a good start there for MMA, I feel. Oh, man, a brilliant start. He's got that command center, so he can just double replenish his SCVs, no matter even if he loses a few here. Now he's going to pick up and land down. He already has his own tank out. Just needs to get siege mode, and he's, like, completely fine against pretty much anything that comes his way. Just has to be so careful about the other club Banshee that is now on the natural instead. Yep, it's just floated directly under that, and, well, hell, he's got himself two Vikings up, and that Banshee's now under half health. One scan will kill it. Puma knows this and wants to back it off. He can't invest more gas into doing that. He's already put himself in this nasty position, and now Puma's going to roll out. SCVs are in the mix here as well, probably to repair that Banshee, and is looking to go in at the natural, but this is blunted already due to the fact that there's only one, actually two Banshees total instead of three. I remember there's these four Hellions as well. The depot is all closed, but if he wants to let more units out from the barracks, then he's gonna, the way it's waypointed, he's gonna have to let the supply depots down, so that's something to keep a tab on. But now the Banshees are coming in, but a scan is not available right now. That's it. Oh, no, it is actually on the natural, so. Oh, the tank, though. Tank take a lot of fire. Oh, he got it stuck there, and Puma gets some good damage in there as well. And even after actually learning about what's coming, the question is can he stop? The invincible, the indestructible 1-1-1 build of Puma, who is now going all the way into the main base. SCB's now coming off the line. Vikings now on the ground. Nice pickup of the tank, very fast. The Hellions make their way in after killing the supply depot. And this is looking actually really kind of grim for both players. But because of those Hellions, there's going to be no economy left for Puma. This is his army right now. He's not going to be replenishing this anytime soon. He does have a Banshee, that is MMA, on the way out. If he can just get a bit of, just a little bit of health on these Marines. Four, four Marines isn't even enough to kill the Banshee, especially if he gets a hit or so. Gets with a hit with a tank. Siege tank. Second hit. Does. There it is. And now he should be able to pick this off. And there is no economy left. There is one SCV. There are no SCVs. Those Hellions heroically get their way through the Supply Depot eventually. And here's the Banshee. And well, Puma, what do you got to answer that? Absolutely nothing. And the tank's going down here as well. And there's the GG. An explosive start to this series. And a crucial misstep by Puma allows MMA to gain the upper hand. Yeah, that was a pretty, pretty high-paced uh, game there. To start yeah, no kidding. Best of five series. And wow, wow, wow. If that's the, the series, then I'm sure we're in for a treat with the remaining games here and, and then he picks up the first win there over the evil genius getting that first step towards his you know different angled revenge be it the semi-final from Intix Three Masters be it Boxer in Group A and uh, what a great start yeah brilliant start there from MMA a mistake exploited as he should have honestly and then even able just to work that supply depot down oh I tell you Puma, big error, and a easy grab there for MMA. Even as the 1-1-1 crashes down on MMA's base, he gets the Banshee out at just the right time. The question is... Yeah, good decision-making. Yeah, man. What does Puma come back to do? That's the question. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere.
right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this series between Slayers MMA and the Red Trunks playing Terran to the north of Antigua Shipyard versus opponent, it's Evil Geniuses Puma, I believe. Apollo is the correct way to pronounce it. Puma? Yes? Puma. Yeah. That's that's right. Yes? Pu Puma? Just just want right, to make man. sure. Just check in. I, I heard this, this tiny little voice in my head that said it was pronounced Puma, and I thought... <laughs> that's what I thought. Nice, that's uh, happy thoughts. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm just in such a great mood today, what can I say? I'm laughing all the way to the bank. It's wonderful, and that's exactly what MMA is looking to do. If he gets in the round of four, then he's in the money. He would love to get the lion's share, or perhaps even the puma's share of that $25,000 prize pool. We shall see. Yeah, it's a lot of money on the line here. Uh, and this is a, an interesting, you know, if you look at the, the interesting route that both of these guys got here, MMA 3-1 in the groups, Puma 2-2, two, two. but Puma did drop a game against MKP in the group stage and almost <laughs> lost versus Boxer, but MMA smashed through Jack G like it was nothing in a TVT, and I feel that MMA always is well, just has better results when he's more prepared for a match, such as GSL, where yeah. you can know in advance who you're going to play against. And this is exactly the yeah. kind of environment that he's going to shine in. But we do see the refinery first once again here by Pima. So looking for aggression again, be it a very similar style, be it you know, uh, you know, a refined version of what he just tried to do. It's nice that you bring that point up, by the way, because we always have these comparison of performance between GSL results and other tournaments that are usually land-based tournaments that go on over the course of two to three days. And it's entirely different. It really is. The environment couldn't be more different. In GSL, you get a week to prepare for your opponent, very similar to the way the TSL works, and also quite similar to the way that this tournament has operated as well, at least up to this point. And he's had the opportunity, he knows who he's up against at this stage, and his prep is looking phenomenal. He, he didn't make mistakes in that previous game on dual site. Yeah, and the reason why he lost in the Intel Extreme Masters was that he wasn't really well prepared for the aggressive play that Puma brought out. In game number one there, we saw head-to-head, -head, toe to toe macro versus macro style, and MMA crushed. But then when Puma was like, all right, this, this guy is freaking good, and then he switched it up to an aggressive style, which caught his opponent off guard, but this time around, you know, MMA is just more well prepared, as you said. He has a second refinery coming down and very well could do some aggression, aggression of his own or could play a more defensive style here. Um, with the second uh, gas coming down, he can even go into Viking Raven defensive play of his own here. But we do see that factory and, and starport for Puma on the side of his base looking again to go into that cloak banshee play. Indeed. The... Uh reactor going down on this barracks here and not timed at all with this factory so that does make me think that yeah there will be that 111 based play from him marine hellion and then whatever ends up coming out of this especially with two gas it's gonna have to be something pretty damn gas heavy otherwise there's no point in taking it there's the swap over coming in here from puma the factory now being maneuvered just down at the bottom here for whatever reason it doesn't even need it there at the moment yeah, it looks like he's going to do exactly the same thing, just refined and better. So yeah. he's going to go off Club Banshee, then probably into tanks and just go for this 1-1-1 one, one, one build again here. Uh, Hellion takes map control away from Puma in the center here. And in TVT, you can't really scout your opponent until 620 or so with the first scan. Yeah. Or a Hellion at the front or something along those lines, due to the Marine, of course, pushing away that early, early SCV. And let's have a look in M MMA space now. Uh, uh, Medivac is coming out, so he's going to be going for this uh, Marine, Hellion, Medivac drop, but then could follow it up with Banshee, Tank, Viking, anything along those lines. But that aggression from MMA could actually do really, really well here against Puma, considering that the Banshee, of course, uh, is, has just got a very slow rate of fire with one single Banshee, compared to the, the multitude of different units coming from MMA. And the SCV line from Puma could well be in danger. It could, certainly. It's a nice little maneuver there. A lot of gas banked up, a huge amount, in fact, for MMA as a result of taking that double gas, but only going for the medevac and units that don't use gas aside from that. So his follow-up could be a great many things. We've got a tech lab coming down onto the factory here. SCV's thinking, hmm, maybe I want to go out there, or perhaps not. And now that Banshee on the way over to the other side of the map, and here's the drop coming in. 
And it's going to be spotted just a couple of seconds earlier by this factory down at the bottom here. So I'll give Puma a little bit of time to actually respawn. But the thing is, the elevation is going to follow up with four Hellions. All the SCVs now coming off the line here and taking a lot of damage in the process. The Hellions actually firing from the bottom. You can't even see it here. But the amount of damage that's being done as a result of that maneuver is absolutely massive. Oh my god, the SCV count plummets to 11 for Puma. And Banshee now out the... At least this will now get cleaned up by the second Banshee. There's the scan going down to shut down this cloaked Banshee up to the top here. One more salvo is all it needs. Does he get it? Ah, it's on 12. And that's oh. unbelievable. It actually cloaked as the things were coming in, so he didn't take any damage. Yeah, that's going to uh, neutralize the situation a little bit. But look in the main base of this. Two Hellions here doing damage. As soon as that last Marine goes down, only SCP's left. Oh. Oh so my good God. micro. MMA. Oh, that micro is absolutely incredible right there. But wow, the tank comes in and obliterates it. A couple more Marines there. And Puma holds that. And well, Puma is still working on this SEV line. I'll give him all credit for that. He hasn't been forced out just yet. But now that Banshee is still alive. Oh, ah, get a Raven. So Just pick the star port <laughs> up. the Raven. Just pick it He's up. He's doing it. Okay, it's coming, but it's very, very late here. He could have done it after the second Viking uh, immediately, but... Oh, man, look at this. The Banshee doing so much damage. Both of them killing 18 SCVs for MMA. 10 for Puma. Yeah, look, things are looking really good right now for Puma as a result of this. Honestly, that aggression from MMA was absolutely beautiful, but... He misses out not once but twice on getting those Banshees and he must be absolutely furious at this stage knowing he can't kill it. Finally it goes down but Puma actually now in the lead as a result and a large army streaming across the map for him. And a miss rallied Viking unfortunately there. Uh, went all the way down, thought it was a medivac. No, come back, you're a Viking. If he manages to get out a Banshee, we could have a very similar situation as we saw in the first game here. There's a handful of Marines, six, seven, eight in total. But with a tank of his own, without siege mode, as long as he gets fire onto the Marines again, and there is the Banshee, there is that key decision making. But still, there's a little bit too many Marines out, yet he has to lower the count, then he can push this back. Yeah, this is looking a little bit grim right here for MMA this time around as Puma's Banshee play was absolutely wonderful. Good use of the Raven there, picks off the Banshee almost immediately, goes for the second one now, and finally it will die too. But now he's got to deal with the ground forces. Does he have what it takes to make that work? He can get down one auto turret. That's really about it. PDD is useless in this situation. But now Puma's been pushed back. There's enough units out for the moment to hold this, but once this third tank gets into position, Siege mode on the way for Puma as well. It's dicey one way or the other. Yeah, and two by two Marines are coming out to aid this. So that Marine count's getting higher and higher. This Banshee control has to be the sickest ever. Of course, there's no combat shield, so two hits will kill a Marine. But I have to be so careful, MMA. He's being so careful, though. He's doing really well already. He's picked off four. There's the push forward, and that was a good move there by Puma. MMA continues to keep that Banshee alive. It takes a lot of fire in the process. Would love to take a tank, but there's no way he's getting that. But he has cut the Marine count down to the same value he's got. So he is right back in this game. But he's still behind economically. His SCV count much lower than his opponent. Oh, and MMA knows after killing seven Marines with that Banshee, I don't need eight Marines in a medivac anymore. I'm getting really, really comfortable. And I think I can hold whatever he does here. So with all Pom, you know, knowing this information, he's like, I'm going to drop him. But uh -oh. look at that. Puma Humor has so a smart. Viking right in the line of fire here. And that's going to help out a lot. I mean, he can still drop the Marines and kill the Viking, but he's going to be alerted a lot earlier. Exactly. And he runs right into it. Puma just sees that completely. And MMA, with a very slow response to that, the Medivac's actually going to go down here. Oh, nicely played there by Puma. Sloppy response by MMA. The drop shut down, and these Marines now marooned. <laughs> marooned. Um, and now we have, look at it, 18 SCVs for MMA, who stopped building SCVs here. 27 though for Puma who's crawled himself back in here and with this economy he could you know start to expand and play a lot longer term here especially with siege mode done uh, he can sit back in a defensive stance which almost pushes MMA all in per se but he does have a significant army value here oh Viking on Viking of course three versus one wins Banshee remains alive 
10 kills overall. Mm. Air superiority. That's the thing that MMA's got in his favor at the moment. There is now a Raven out for Puma as well. Perhaps concerned about the possibility of transitioning to Cloak Banshee, but also to uh, get that crucial point defense drone out against those Vikings. Puma once again going in for a harassment. There's no missile turret. So freebies here for... Puma against MMA, while this force pushes forward, that Banshee is really badly injured. A single shot from a Viking would take it down. The Raven taking a lot of fire here as well. Not enough energy drop. PDD. Raven is out of the sky now, and this is what he's got going for. He's got to make this push work. He's already losing SCVs. Double account here for Puma. The Raven runs right oh, in. Doesn't what? get a turret down. Oh, miscontrol right there by MMA, and he knows it's done. There's the GG, and Puma right back into the fight. Wow, great decision though for Puma to just hold off, you know, you can calm down, keep building SCVs, expand, forcing the, you know, the switch situation where MMA has to come to him now. And, you know, he had tanks in position, but MMA just, he, he, you know, he can't do anything. He has to attack either way, but he attacks uphill and immediately just gets destroyed, just like that, yep. just by clicking the finger. And uh, the series is drawn up. Yes, it is. Really nice play, man unbelievably nice play from Puma right there and this is what this level of TBT comes down to man it comes down to who makes the most mistakes because they are so equal they are so yeah. close to each other and they're playing their builds perfectly that one slip can do you in and in the terms of MMA there it was actually three slips in total two slips on those banshees at the back which caused him so much economic damage and then the slip with the raven yeah, and it's interesting to see, like, aggression versus aggression. It's, you know, almost uh, Zerg versus Zerg to a certain extent. In terms of game length, in terms of, you know, miscontrolling a unit, for example, like you just said. And, wow, you know, two TVTs just gone like that in, you know, 15 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah, we don't usually see that. It's like, hey, TVT, we're in for a long one tonight, man. But we're cracking through it pretty damn rapidly. One apiece in this best of five series between these two absolutely astonishing players. Now, it's a quick commercial break, folks. You're watching Iron Squid is brought to you by Twitch TV, Astro Gaming, and of course, the one and the only Asus Republic of Gamers. We'll be right back.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this series between Slayers MMA. He's in the Red Trunks. He's playing Terran to the northeast of Daybreak versus his opponent, Evil Genius's Puma. He is in the Blue Trunks. He is playing Terran to the southwest. And unlike the first two starting maps here in this best of five series, is of course this is a larger map, so I expect them to just kind of slow down a little bit down, uh, and just go to a more basic macro game, you know, one batch expansion. Uh, anything along those lines is the aggression that we saw on game one and two on on, on dual site and Antigua is the very small maps in terms of base to base rather yeah, yeah. than you know big surface areas around and uh, on ju on uh, daybreak sorry is it of course the distance is much further apart the aggressive player if they do decide to play aggressive here is such a disadvantage the passive player has a lot more time to react a lot more time to build stuff up uh, and set up a solid defense so naturally we'll go into a more straight up game here I feel. Indeed. I played my first matchup on this map a couple of days ago, Apollo. It was awful. Good lord. I have never been destroyed so badly. To be fair, it was a Diamond League smurf. As I checked his score later, he apparently had not done his placements for several seasons on that account. And went straight back into Diamond League. It was a bit brutal, honestly. I learned the hard way that this map has an awful lot of ways in which you can be completely destroyed. Although that was against Zerg. Ugh, run by City, I tell you that for a fact. But TBT, a lot slower, as you pointed out earlier. Played some pretty long games on this map. Can end up very much being Tank Marine, Tank Marine over and over again. And very interesting is both of these actually take double gas to go completely against the uh, the water flow Are here. they going to 1-1-1 one, one, one and... again? <laughs> I know, it would be quite funny, wouldn't it, if they it just would. went ahead and did it again. But yeah. I guess, I mean, you can think about it as, uh, you can go ahead and say from MMA's point of view that, okay, you know, this is a, this is an old straight up map. If, if Pumas is going to go ahead and wall back expansion, then maybe I can now get the upper hand if I do pull off a successful Cloak Banshee rush or anything along those lines. Because, of course, the defenses will be a, a little bit low, just Marines and so on. But at the same time, that we said this is more passive defensive route so I'm not really sure how this is going to go down because both of them won't really be able to get over to the other side fast enough so this is actually going to be maybe Cold Banshee versus Cold Banshee which uh, could be funny but that we'll is to see how it's going to play out. Worst kind of fight imaginable man it really is like not only can we not shoot each other but we can't see each other either it's horrible but I think that what we should mention here is these guys play against each other a lot like they practice together as well it's not the fact that they are not on the same team. They practice together loads, you know, all the time. So it's a big series of nothing but mind games between these two. Yeah, I guess they kind of live together, so I guess Indeed. that helps. Um, we do see the, the tech lab down on the... Oh, is, is Puma going to go? What's he doing here? Okay, so let's just start put at the front. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, a little bit more dangerous, of course, because it gets revealed a lot easier. Indeed. But he hasn't taken the second gas, so it's just a single Banshee here. And, and likewise... MMA doing pretty much exactly the same thing here, so, wow, I mean, these guys are playing like they are the same person. <laughs> At this point, by the looks of it, they essentially are, I mean, they're doing the same kind of things this entire series. They are very much in tune with each other's psyches and play styles, which can result in some very interesting get games, but it can also result in some very awkward games, uh, as we've seen, and then, once again, it comes down to who makes the first mistake that really gives the advantage to the opponent. Yeah, it's uh, the same kind of any mirror matchup, and look, Heli versus Heli, but one Marine gives the advantage to MMA, who gets the kill Indeed. on uh, the opposing Heli. Yeah, and that gives him map control, also the opportunity to rush out here, and he might be able to find out about that Banshee if he decides to go all the way up. Now spotted, and oh look, it's exactly the same situation, but this time MMA is going to get out of there while the getting is good. But both of these guys, upon seeing a single Hellion out, also know that the probability of a Starport and Banshee is pretty damn high. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an Engineering Bay or Viking yeah. from either of them follow the single Banshee out. We actually see an expansion coming down there's for the both Viking. of the Hellions as well. Uh, and yeah, look, there's the Viking as uh, they're kind of predicting an Engineering Bay as well for MMA. But not an Engineering Bay down for Puma, who's oh, taking a bit of a risk, but there it is. is uh, taking the second gas instead so if worse comes to worse you can easily switch over and get a raven out yeah here we go banshee on one side banshee on the other viking's going to be out in time for mma not so much for puma however so there's an opportunity to start doing some damage here and that's exactly what he's going to do focusing down as many scvs as he can before he's going to be forced out by the viking in the meantime 
couple of Hellions actually get in there by Puma, and that was a bit of a slip up there by MMA to allow that to happen. Very slow response to that as well. And the Banshee shut down by the Viking without a problem, but this Hellion harassment's been quite significant here by Puma. Yeah, it's actually uh, been pretty good, but MMA with the, the better kill here in terms of SCV count actually Indeed. got double uh, due to that single Banshee just going to town on everything. A later Viking was the reason for that, but Blue Flame is coming out from Puma, so I would not be surprised to see the follow-up into Mech. Mech is very strong on this map as you can grab that earlier third base and kind of hold everything with a single tank line from natural to third. And then as long as you make sure that you have a turret or so in the main, uh, you're going to be able to defend drops rather easily here. But what is MMA doing? We're about to find out as he switches everything apart. And that first factory is going to produce a tank. There you go. You are so smart, Apollo. I've never seen anyone able to predict exactly what's coming out just as it builds like that. That's incredible. Yeah, that was uh, pretty slick. You got and skills. Let's have a look. Double gas taken on the on the main for Puma, but he should, if he wants to play mech, of course, grab the gases on the natural pretty damn fast here. But uh, that's he hasn't done it yet. And I guess if he mm. wants to, he has to take that now. But we do see Bio coming out definitely for MMA. That's for sure here. Uh, who will be playing Bio tank? But I much prefer the route that Puma's going to be taking here if he grabs these double gases. And here we go. Vikings escorting a Banshee. It's precious cargo over to the mineral line, no doubt. And there is a missile turret there, so that's going to make things a little bit awkward. Air superiority in favor of Puma for the moment, although not by a huge amount. Interested to see what kind of damage he can do here. He's going to go for a two-pronged harassment. First one is going to be with these Blue Flame Hellions here. Blue Flame now having been revealed. Going to try and force his way down here. The Marine Count is going to have to remain at the natural in order to repulse this army here. Tank comes out as well. Single Hellion blown to smithereens. And now here comes this Banshee harassment with its four Viking escort across the map. And it should easily knock down these two Vikings here and start to do a little bit of damage. But it's given MMA a bit of time to actually get back into position. And the only anti-air he has are those marines, so he's going to have to pull the marines into the main base, and that allows the Hellions to run to the natural, and nice little play here by Puma, and uh, picks off a Viking with a Banshee, As you marines do. do come in, Hellions though still put on that Zalnaga tower. Yep, it's pretty damn dangerous, but there's a bit of a split up here now, and there's more than enough Marines to deal with that single Banshee now. These five Vikings actually aren't proving to be all that useful at all at this stage. They can land, sure, but they'll be obliterated by those tanks, and, well, that's what happens when you get into engagement. Does he really want to give those Vikings to MMA? Apparently he does. He takes a tank down, but the repair comes in to uh, deal with the rest of that, and not able to get a Blue Flame follow-up to that either to deal damage to this worker line. And a kind of unsuccessful harassment there. I mean, he Indeed. did some damage, but way, way not enough compared to what he lost there. He still hasn't the caught up yet. The follow-up is going to be that mech. We see the, all the factories there. We see the double refinery as well. And from here on out, he will be playing a little bit more of a defensive path. But uh, with Hellions uh, and that Banshee still alive, he still will try to get in if possible, for sure. But overall, a more defensive stance may even throw that third command center down very, very shortly, unless... That is that he wants to go for a two base push as usually the way to deal with mech is to be overly greedy so to be beat over greed you go for a two base timing indeed you do and hellions come in puma spots what's coming but he goes for the run by anyway a couple of marines moving to intercept there's now marauders actually coming in on the field so the amount of damage these hellions are going to do is it's not insignificant, but it's not great either. He picks off a couple of SCVs here and there at the front, delays the command center, gets the scout on the command center, but now there's this big force moving across the map. Oh, this is actually very, very dangerous here for Puma. He's only just going to get his first tech up. A scan goes down from MMA. Oh, my. Confirms there's nothing there. The Let's Viking immediately going down. He knows he's in trouble. Yeah, no siege tech up either. The siege deployment comes in. The Hellions come in from the back here. SCVs pulled off the line. The Marines get obliterated very rapidly thanks to those blue flame Hellions. And a couple of tanks come for the cleanup here. Excellent hold here by Puma. Yeah, really, really good hold there. And he knows he had to pull SCVs. Otherwise, that was a no hold. And uh, he does indeed, and now he can start that plus one vehicle attack from the armor very, very shortly here, as he does have Siege Mode coming in. He could go for a counter attack, but the problem is that Stim is done and Marauders are out, so this small little force here by Puma cannot really cross the halfway line, and if he does, it's a very dangerous area for him to be playing around with. 
Yeah, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that, looking at it. It's absolutely ridiculous. He'll send the Hellions forward for a scout, and he shall see what's there, and he's going to be thinking, well, surely now is just the time to sit back and relax. I don't want to be anywhere near that, surely. He's deployed in the center, so at least he holds his Selnaga Tower. He's also got the Vikings there, and a couple more Vikings, funnily enough, moving in just to scout here and there, and that's the one edge that Puma's got here. If he gets into a tank war, he does have an edge quite significantly in terms of the number of Vikings he's got, so he's got that vision that he needs. Absolutely, and because his opponent has or is playing bio, he has to be building medibacks. And the other advantage for having the Viking control is that you can snipe medibacks at will, yep. and then the bio army becomes so soft. But we only see one engineering bay down for MMA, not really stretching his advantage, and that advantage being that Puma will be on the back foot for a little while. But there's no third command center yet. It's only going to start coming down, you know, after the next minute or so. And there's a lot of units out here for Puma who could be very well going for this little siege up upon the inevitable coming third base of uh, MMA. Yeah, Puma's actually all over the place at the moment. He's got Marines scouting, he's got Hellions trying to move in to do some damage here. Not able to do that. MMA's defense just a little bit too tight for that to work. But the thing is, behind that, he can start to push forward. If he takes this Cell Naga and sieges up, then that could be disastrous for MMA, who now stims forward, takes control of it himself. Yeah, basically that Cell Naga Tower acts as a pivot point for anybody that controls it. Uh, Medivax immediately get shot down. This army becoming very, very squishy now, and there's still no command center down. And SCVs are being pulled as well. This is exactly a two base plus one vehicle weapons timing here for uh, Puma, and he's going to hit a he's going to hit it beautifully here, right before that third base actually pays for itself for MMA. That's very true, and can he stop it more than point? Zelnaga Tower was held by MMA, but he had no deployment here whatsoever, which was in itself not a very good idea, because here comes the rain, and Puma brings it down on top of MMA. A big hit there once again. MMA now in a sieged up position. Nobody controlling the Zelnaga Tower at present, but lots of vision range available here for Puma, thanks to that massive air superiority. And this has to work, remember. Look at all the SMVs he's pulled. MMA, all he has to do is just hold on, survive in these positions, and he will be able to take the game, of course, because now the multiple barracks are kicking in to add the extra value, the production to his army. Indeed, we see a large flanking force from MMA over there, very badly injured as a result of having no medevacs there, shut down completely by the presence of these Vikings, but the amount of deploying and undeploying that's going on is crazy. Puma has a large tank advantage. He's got double the numbers and air superiority. That makes things awkward, but this is the kicker. This Marauder Force over to the side could break this if it goes in at just the right time. Yeah, if Puma makes mistakes on Siege, it's game over. He has to be so delicate with unseaging moving forward. Remember, every 15 seconds is a scan going down which is 250 minerals away from the economy of MMA. He has no air control, he has no presence to see the tanks, but he, like I said, Pima has to be so incredibly careful here. Yeah, and the problem is if he's so slow, then he enables MMA to get this big lead. He's already got a big supply lead, look at that. His army is a bit bigger, he's got a much, much better economy, he's got double the SCVs, give or take, and Puma needs to go and destroy MMA now. The longer he waits, the worse this gets. Walks into siege tank fire over here, and the majority of the force is actually now in a holding pattern in front of MMA's natural, looking to try and somehow deal with this massive tank count. And MMA drops in the main base of Puma and says, if you're going to push me, you better kill me because you're about to lose every single factory in your main base, and this is a brilliant move here. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff. Gets those medivacs out. The air superiority totally useless if your Vikings are in the wrong place. And now Puma needs to go. He must. And this is where he could get caught out. MMA is just waiting for him to do that. SCV is getting obliterated right here. Primarily a Marauder Force. Not remotely vulnerable to these blue flame Hellions. Getting cleaned up very rapidly. 16 SCVs falling. This is it. Puma's got this army and nothing else. If this fails, he is out of this map without question. And MMA is happy to just sit there and wait for him. Indeed he is, but there's only a certain time that he can wait. He's going to have to stay in and run eventually, but the siege tank line is so incredibly deep here. He's still waiting for additional medivacs, starting to heal up this dead and hurt force. The Vikings edging closer, the tanks and Hellions pushing more closer. 
This is incredibly tense. It is indeed. Puma trying to put down a stranglehold on his opponent, using his superior numbers and his air control to actually make that work, but he is so far behind in terms of his supply now. Two medivacs get picked off, but two more come around the flank, and here comes the big stim right here by MMA. Gets a great concave, smashes his way through the tank count. Can he take them all out? The SCVs buffer a ton of damage. Most of those tanks are now down, but there's still eight more on the map that could come to reinforce here. Exactly, but MMA can actually pull all his SCVs and gold. There's no Hellions, and he could crush through this. That's all he has to oh, do. Oh, he drops on top of the tank force. line. There he goes. Marauders come in, and there's the GG. Nice move right there by MMA. Finishes it off, and Puma obliterated in that map once again. A lovely maneuver by MMA to drop the main. And he just now goes ahead and takes the advantage in this best of five series. One game away from victory, one game away from going to Paris to playing in the grand finals. On the other hand, will Puma be able to come back? We've seen him do it before. Will he be able to do it again? Well, well, well. Such a tense series, such a crazy series. Hyper aggression coming in across all maps, regardless of what they happen to be. Biggest map in the map pool? Nah, who cares? We don't really care at all. We're just going to get in there and do some damage. That's what you see. Yeah, that was two. crazy, crazy good. But brilliant decision, you know, to go for this two base timing, uh, understanding that. A bio player against mech, like I said, is always going to take the option to, to to go greedy because the mech player is trying to go to a 200 supply army, he's trying to sit back defensive, upgrading, doesn't want to lose his tanks to stimmed units in the center. And then the flip side of that, if the bio player is playing greedy, there's a big window before he actually has an army and that's exactly what Puma was trying to hit. He didn't manage it though, unfortunately. He almost had it, but... MMA had just a little bit too much time on a little too big an economy. And there we go. MMA 2-1 in this best of five series. Will it be MMA going to Paris? Or will Puma be able to rally from this position? We'll find out very shortly, folks. Do not go anywhere.
Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this series between Slayer's MMA and the Red Trunks playing Terran to the northeast of the Cloud Kingdom versus his opponent, Evil Genius's Puma, who is currently training one game in this best of five series. He is in the blue, uh, playing Terran to the southwest. And Puma has had a bit of trouble in Terran vs. Terran recently, that's no lie, you look at his history in this matchup and he has lost the players that he shouldn't be losing to, being one of the star players of Team Evil Genius, but that's something that he has to overcome himself as a progressively getting better player here, and this is a very difficult challenge, this is MMA, this is a champion right here, so this is very very difficult for him, but if anybody's going to do it, then it's going to be an evil genius player. I mean, they've had, you know, champions themselves. Puma is a champion himself. Indeed. But we'll have to see whether he can. Cloud Kingdom is a great map. He's actually got pretty good stats on this map. Yes, he does. And is this the version with the Space Shark? I think the Space Shark has actually vacated its comfortable holiday home, unfortunately. So it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing him anytime soon. But MMA has been playing so fast this entire time. I love MMA style, it's an absolute pleasure to watch, including in TBT. The bio style, the speed, the uh, multiple drops, we're not seeing it so much in this series thus far, but we did see a little bit of it come out and indeed win him the game on the uh, Daybreak map, so we'll see what he comes out with here. Gas coming down for both identical builds thus far. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about MMA's playstyle overall, not just in this matchup, is the speed he plays at. I much prefer to see, you know, a micro-intensive, speed-heavy player compared to a slow, more strategical player, for, like, for example, Thorzane. But that's just uh, my opinion, of course. I, I love the explosive style we see from MMA, and it's just, that means basically when a person plays that fast, the, un the skill level is almost unlimited because he has so much speed, he can do more stuff at more time and we see actually a tap up coming down for Puma here and reactor I mean not sorry reactor sorry Reaper opening uh, is, is the most likely follow-up here of course uh, you're not really gonna see a Marauder or any early upgrade so Reaper opening is pretty good here uh, of course you can jump into the main you can scout you can potentially even pick off two SUVs or more yeah, I love it. Reaper Expand has been such a classic build for the longest time. It was the thing in the beta. It was way more so than it is now, honestly. We don't see it so much. I think that people have got a little bit more variety. They've also got wise to the idea as well. It's shut down. It's not as destructive as it used to be. But it's still damn good nonetheless. And uh, we'll be seeing that coming out from him momentarily. Got to be a little bit careful. MMA's got control of his Zelnaga Watchtower. And is actually moving an a Marine up to the top here, which is on patrol move, possibly looking for that very opening. Well, uh, he's looking for, for more of a second barracks here, uh, as we do see a lot of two barracks on this map. The, the big problem is that this Reaper goes straight into the radius of the Marine on the Zelmog Tower, so it has been scouted nice and really. Oh, we, I can also confirm presence of Space Shark. He was actually hiding previously, so he's come out to play now. All is bright with the world as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Reaper gets pushed away here, and the follow-up is, uh, of course, Combat Shields. This Combat Shields is the best all-round upgrade for Terran versus Terran. Just gives you such a defensive opportunity, oh, yeah. and also aggressive one, too. Uh, we do see double hell is 2x2, two two, but that Combat Shield is going to make a big, big difference. Reaper does go in undetected so far, and he's going to get a bit of a snipe. Yeah, absolutely. He can delay this command center, very easily pick off the SCV, gets the scout on the SCV. I mean, that, what he's pretty much done there is paid for it, and it goes in against Hellions, which is never a good idea, but he wasn't getting out of there anyway, so... Nice opening there by Puma, slows down his opponent's build, has a good idea of what's coming there, and the command center about to finish for Puma here. Yeah, and I love the, the fact that he's taken the option to play straight up, but yep. the problem is, Two Hellions can beat three Marines here. They can, assuming they are able to uh, get in the right place. Great positioning there by Puma. Absolutely fantastic stuff. G good control. Doesn't lose a single one. And those Hellions are a little bit damaged now. He'll try and come in from the flank. And if he gets off a good shot, then he'll still be good. But look at the way the Puma's actually set up his Marines. He's now got Combat Shield. This will not work. Yeah, and he gets in the bunker, buys enough time before the Hellions start roasting away in a, an amazing little defense there. Even right. though it is very small, it's a, a feat in itself. And there's the very early factor here. So we are going to go straight into early medivacs uh, and start putting pressure on immediately with Stim Marines. But we do have a single Banshee coming out, but we already know that Combat Shields is done. Uh, so this may be a, a relatively easy hold for Puma, but the problem is he doesn't have anything in his main yet. He doesn't even know about the potential 
of the follow-up. But when you play a very uh, economic focused style like Premier Rays, you have to defend in both fronts no matter what because you know your opponent hasn't expanded the same time you have. Therefore, he has to do something to slow you down. Exactly. Whether that be a drop in the main or Banshee, it doesn't matter. So I would not be surprised to start seeing some uh, some Marines uh, rally to the back of his base. Indeed. We've got a Banshee on the way out right now and Raven follow up for that as well. It's a double expand here from MMA. It's a pretty smart move. He knows he's behind. If he can do the damage and then land the expansion and actually secure it, he's going to be so far ahead. And tries to move in here. There's no, well, the Marines are fairly close by, so it's not really too much of a risk. He might end up losing a couple. There is an escape path here for this Banshee. This is actually quite an easy place to harass from the top because of this mountain range here and because of this void area up to the top. And only two kills on the Banshee. A third kill there in terms of that Marine. Looks to try and take a fourth. Might be able to. get it out of there just in time. Ooh. Just in time indeed, 8 HP left on that, a couple more hits and it Risky would map. have gone down, but we're about to see the two medivacs come out as soon as he hits 200 gas, a perfectly executed build so far by Puma, who grabs a third refinery to make that plus one viable as well here, and as soon as these two medivacs come out, this could start to get dangerous, but we are seeing a change of style here by MMA, who's deciding to play fast third command center and straight into mech, who we see with blue flame on its way here. Blue Flame's actually going to be really good against these Marines, but with plus one attack, that does start to change things, and also the deployment of where the Marines actually go down and engage from. Yeah, that Hellion was pushing its luck a little bit there, I feel. Doesn't really get anything out of that whatsoever. And yeah, as, as you said, it depends on how the engagement actually comes in here. Puma will be on his guard against such things. Needs to keep it out. If he gets caught out by that kind of attack, then his army will be absolutely obliterated. So some high-risk maneuvers from both of these guys at the moment. SCV moving out in this direction and is probably going to regret that decision. Uh, there's a medivac going south here, and if he meets up with a couple of Hellions, then, you know, he could actually drop into the main base of Puma, and that would be so detrimental to this game and the survival of Puma within this tournament. But the Hellions are starting to come out. Blue Flame almost are not quite done, but he He's does force on. a stim. Oh, watch out for the Raven! Ah, down goes the Raven! That was not a useful Raven. And some damage done there, but he evacuates quite rapidly. Yeah, and the no damage has really been dealt yet to MMA, aside from that Raven, but that's nothing that he's worried about. The Hellions, though, the Medivac is about to meet up with oh, these yeah. four Hellions down on the south side. A single turret is in place, but that's not enough to stop the Medivac before nope. the Hellions deploy here. Nothing in the main base yet. The SCV line is in so much trouble. Ooh. Somebody hit the alarm. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen, man. He's not going to know about this until it's knocking, knocking, knocking on his door. And it's going to be very, very soon as well. And MMA actually does give him a couple extra seconds. Wants to get out of the way. Would love to keep that medevac alive. And now, going straight for the middle line. How much damage can he do with these blue flame hellions? That couple of seconds may have bought Humor enough time to shut this down. And he does so with absolute precision. Yeah, good, good shit down there. But the third base is now up for the mech player over the bio player, which uh -oh. doesn't make sense. The nope. world's about to blow up. It has to be the other way around, so Pima has to get this third base down immediately. And the reason for that is you cannot let the mech player have a better income than you. You're the player that's meant to have the mobility. You're the one meant to be destroying and slowing down that mech player. And that's exactly what he's planning to do. Look at the medivac count. So many medivacs. They could actually snipe the command center here. Oh, but the sensor tower pops up and didn't even see that in the nick of time. Yeah, exactly. And that gives him time to deploy the siege tank. And that's perhaps the most important thing there. Medivacs aren't going to make much difference with that kind of fire coming at it. And now we see a reversal of fortune. MMA with air superiority decides to have a free shot at those medivacs. And, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw him at... Oh, okay, there it is. Expand again here. As that's the exact thing to do in this scenario. You can't attack a mech player when he's got tanks up. You can't drop when the sensor towers and Vikings. What else do you have left? You have to expand again. You have to push for advantage somewhere else. Indeed you do. There's a quick stim there by Puma. Trying to do some damage. Is able to do some to the Banshee. That will be easily repaired, however. And MMA in a really solid position. Puma does not want to charge into that. That would be absolute suicide. There are so many Blue Flame Hellions available here. No plus one as of yet, but it's more than halfway done. Things looking really solid, and so look at how defensive this is. It makes sense. You know, you're a mech player. Mech players are based on positioning. What mm. better thing to build than a couple of sensor towers to ensure there is no easy way into your base? 
And if Puma doesn't slow MMA down soon, what we're going to see from MMA is a hop, skip, and jump. And what that entails is unseaging, going to the Zell Nogat Towers, the hop, so the higher ground is the, the skip, and then finally the jump to the third base. And that is a push that is almost unstoppable if you cannot slow the mech player down. Yep, five blue flame Hellions go up to the top to see, oh, is the mech expand here? No, there is not. And you will manage to catch a couple of Hellions out of position, doing some damage, nothing that can't be easily replaced, however. And the tank count starting to get a little bit terrifying, Apollo. It's an eight already, and he's building three at a time. Yeah, and he's getting ready to do that hop, skip, and jump. The Hellions on the left-hand side for MMA do see this fourth base down. He knows that the force of uh, Puma isn't as large as it would normally be because of this fourth base. So here's the hop, skip, and jump coming before Torture supplies. He knows that fourth oh, base is slowed oh, down. Oh, oh, oh. That was brutal. Good God. Oh, those Marines did not stand a chance running away into the way of a conflagration of fire. But here we go. This is this push that you were talking about. Gonna be fairly slow. He's already making his way past the halfway line. Puma looking to intercept. I wouldn't recommend it. Not with that heli encounter. There's a lot of Marines in there. Does get the stim forward, but doesn't kill a tank. And takes a lot of punishment in response for that insincerity of the push. And look, the supply is actually larger for MMA here. And this is not the good position to be in. There's so many medivacs, but there's so little units here. The upgrades aren't even that strong. Only at 2-1. Plus two armor not near completed yet, and MMA's just playing such a good game right now. He's not making hardly any mistakes here, and there's Hellions coming around oh to my. the third base. Oh no! There's nothing there! You can't fight it with a satellite dish! Here come the Marauders at the right time, but they're not going to be able to kill them fast enough before exceptional damage is done! And that's exactly what's going on right now, and it could have been a hell of a lot worse looking at all those red health SCVs, I'll tell you that for a fact, but that was not a good situation to be in. MMA is going to expand twice again behind all of this. So many command centers coming down and this ridiculous air superiority. There's no way those medevacs are going to stay alive and Puma gets into a position where he gets a lot dropped on him but there's the counter stim to try and smash his way through that count but the tanks are now deployed and huge losses inflicted on Puma. He did kill a lot of Hellions, though he narrowed the count down by about 70% there. And if he goes in to get into the siege tank line in time... Oh, he ah. does, can't do it! And he's losing so many medifacts as that massive Viking count goes in pretty much without opposition. There are barely any Marines in that force to shoot at them. And MMA continues this push across the map right here. And this is getting really awkward now for Puma. It's very difficult to maintain this. Oh, MMA just pushing so elegantly, half by half consistently. When he sees his opponent out of position, he just completely unseages. And he blank. knows that... Oh, yeah. The, oh, my God. He sieges up. No. He's sieged up already for you it. A brilliant move there. by Puma should be to run to the third base to snipe it off. But at the same time, he'd sacrifice his own. Here come the Marines. He's actually able to get some and pick off a couple of Vikings here and there. But you know what? The Vikings are just going to go for it. He knows if he can just take those medevacs out, then it doesn't really matter if he has Vikings or not. Stim forward by the Marauders, and he, they kill off a few Hellions here and there. But the medevac count is gone now, and the tanks getting into a really dangerous position on that fourth. And Puma finally moving around the left. He has to drag his opponent back, who has not set up defenses correctly. If he can stim towards the third base and pull MMA back, he will have enough time to remax again. He's now at 2-2 two, two upgrades, but he cannot... Oh, no, he's going to try to flank instead. He's trying to flank this army. He scans. He sees it's not going to work. No, it is not. And indeed, there's actually a defensive planetary fortress in position on that third base there. So even if he did go for it, he takes some losses. And MMA's position now looking solid. He chokes the fourth base. And Puma now having to move this orbital command elsewhere. MMA almost maxed out at this point. Sitting on a really good economy. Puma's is better, I have to admit. But there's also the possibility of this Hellion harassment coming in from the side. Oh no, he now sees the fourth base, he's going to siege up on the cliff and this is going to be an almost unbreakable position for MMA. Oh yes, the sensor tower is going to see it, but what's he going to do about it? Not very much, I'm afraid. Idle bystander as he pushes once again onto that base. In the meantime, here comes the push right in the planetary fortress. It collapses before the repairs come in. And that's a target-rich environment right there for Puma, but also for MMA, who is trying to push his way through there. Needs to be careful. The stim comes forward just as the tank deployment goes down. Severe damage being inflicted by Puma, but I think there's just too many tanks to make that work. Oh, it's so incredibly close, but the Hellion reinforcements come in to start buffering once again. Even though this is third base, Puma's going to bring back his reinforcements for one last push to kill this tank line. 
The question is, can he make it work? The uh, Zelnaga Tower is held on both sides by MMA. Should be able to see this coming a mile away. Should be able to deal with it without too much of a problem. And he's going to have to pull SCVs as well. This is it. If he doesn't crush this attack, the game is gone. He's not going to friends. MMA will win this series. And here comes that big flanking maneuver. Puma incredibly damaged units due to having no medevacs whatsoever. Some of those guys I don't think can even stim. They're that hurt at this stage. That's really going to hurt Puma there. A errant concussive shell blows a hole in that tank. But unfortunately, here is the grand stim. Will it be enough to break through? It will not. They're so weak. They don't even take down a single tank. And Puma's supply count plummeting now. The third, fourth, whatever the hell base it is, we don't really care at this stage, is down and out and now MMA looking to deliver the killing blow to EG's Puma yeah he's gonna recollect everything together and then just charge at the natural he knows he's just bust the economy of Puma and this is an amazing amazing display there it is tank. GG ladies and gentlemen and MMA takes the series three games to one and MMA is going to represent Slayers in Le Grand Rex in Paris in the round of four the grand finals of the one and only Iron Squid Tournament. And he will be facing off against Fanatics Alive in this first semi-final we've now established in, well, will be happening, of course, in Paris. And wow, what a crazy first day of the quarterfinals we've had. Yeah, that was nuts. That was some unbelievably high quality games, which people should have honestly expected. Looking at the lineup of the round of eight, how could it have been anything but... Awesome stuff from both sides. Incredibly great series. And that's only half of it. We've got more tomorrow. Oh, we have. We've got another set of fantastic games for you tomorrow. We're bringing in Nesty versus Jack G, the, the Zerg Swarm God himself, going oh, yeah. up against Jack G, who has one of the best Terran versus Zergs out there in the world. And then finally, Marine King Prime coming to his throne against Symbol. The Ooh. underdog there, but still could go either way. It could. It very, very could. Symbol's best matchup certainly is Zerg versus Terran. Marine King on unbelievable form at the moment. Can the upstart player take that victory? He's in a position where the expectations are very high on MKP and not so much on him. If he takes that, it would be the coup of the entire tournament. And of course, Jachi Nesti cannot fail to be unbelievably good. We have GSL champion after GSL champion in this tournament, and they're going to be fighting each other in the round of eight tomorrow, which will be starting at 1900 BST, which is at 2000 or 8 p.m. Central European Summertime. That is 2 p.m. EDT and 11 a.m. PDT. And if you're in another time zone, well, I'm sure you can figure it out for yourself because you have superior brain power to the rest of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Iron Squid Round of 8 Show 1. Show 2 coming up tomorrow. Do not miss it. Please remember to thank our sponsors, Twitch TV, Asus Republic of Gamers, and of course, Astro Gaming. Check out ironsquid.tv for all the information you could possibly need about the rest of this tournament. And remember, there are a few tickets left. The majority of the tickets for the live show in Paris, the Grand Finals, are sold already. You need to keep an eye out for that, no question. So if you want a ticket, you better get it pretty damn fast. Head over to ironsquid.tv for more information on that. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. And I've been D Apollo. And we'll see you next time.